Welcome to another episode from Virtualize Everything, where we strive to inform and educate the viewer about technology and technology-related topics. Tonight's presentation is going to be about installing Linux Mint on Proxmox in a VM. This is a pretty straightforward installation with most of the techniques applied here in the beginning part of the video able to be used for any VM installation with Proxmox. We're going to use relatively basic and standard configurations for the VM in the next slides. But know that you can apply whatever resources greater than the minimum resources required by Linux Mint. The first step that you're going to need to do is to select your server. Once you have the Proxmox web interface open, you will see your server directly underneath the data center dropdown on the left hand side. I have placed an arrow for you to be able to easily identify this server's location. The next step you're going to want to take is click Create VM. That will be in the upper right hand corner. Then you're going to enter your VM ID and the name that you want to give your VM. The last step you need to do is click Next. Now for the OS element of your VM configuration, you're going to want to select the ISO of Linux Mint that you have uploaded to your Proxmox server. If you need help with this, please check out our previous video about creating a VM in Proxmox. Then you need to click Next. Now for System, we're just going to move on and leave everything as default. For your hard drive configuration, we need to enter the size of hard drive we would like to use. 32 gigs is the default configuration for Proxmox, but you can use less or more as you desire. After you have entered the drive size, click Next. Now it is time to tell Proxmox how many CPU cores you would like to use. Today we'll be using three. As my server is a quad core and I want to have one core left over for Proxmox to run efficiently. Then we can click Next and move on. At this point, we're going to enter the value of RAM that we would like to give to our VM. I have chosen four gigs. I do have 16 gigs available in this server, but I feel four gigs should be more than adequate for the tasks that I want to do with Linux Mint. So 4098 or 4098 is the value I enter for four gigs of RAM. I press next to continue and we're going to use the default network setup for Proxmox. We can do this by just clicking next. And at this point, we're asked to review our configuration. Knowing that we entered everything correctly in the previous slides, we're just going to press finish. Now we're at the blank Proxmox web interface. We do see our newly created VM here underneath our server on the left hand side of the screen. We want to select that. Then we want to start the VM by clicking start and we click console to display our GUI 
interface in this case. The first screen that we're presented with from our GUI interface will look like this. And we want to press enter to start Linux Mint. Now Linux Mint will start as a live CD or live image and give us the option to install after we have fully booted into Linux Mint. This is the desktop when you have fully loaded into Mint that you will be presented with. Notice the CD icon that says install Linux Mint. We're going to click on it. Now, we'll select our language and click continue. The same goes for keyboard layout, where we'll select the one we want to use. The defaults are fine for me, so we're just going to click continue. Now, if you plan to do much multimedia streaming or other things, you will want to check this install multimedia codexes box here. It will not be checked as default. Then we can press continue to move on. Now it's time to configure your hard drive settings for Linux Mint. Remember, we have assigned Linux Mint 32 gigs in this VM. So, making sure the default circle of erase disk and install Linux Mint is checked, we can go ahead and click install now. Now, we can make sure that we have the right drive. At this point, we can just click continue. And it's time to enter our time zone. I'm here on the eastern coast of the United States, so the default of New York works just fine for me, so I'm going to go ahead and click continue. You may find that you need to change your time zone. Now, enter your system configurations. As this is kind of just a testing system, I have kept mine simple. But remember, the easier and shorter password you have, the less security you have, which the more vulnerable it makes your network. But don't make your password so long that you don't want to use it. Because turning off passwords or configuring systems not to use them is just as bad as having a short password. We click continue to move on. Now, you probably want to go get a cup of coffee or something, as Linux Mint will take a few minutes to install. It's not a very large operating system, so this will happen quite quickly, but it will be a few minutes. After Mint has finished installing, you will be presented with this screen. I suggest that you click Restart Now to move on to the installed version of Linux Mint. All you need to do here is press Enter. Although Proxmox will leave your media disk installed, the BIOS will automatically reconfigure itself so that it boots from the hard drive and no longer the live CD. So just press the Enter key and Linux Mint will reboot to a desktop that looks like this. Now it's going to be time to update Linux Mint to the newest versions of software contained within the operating system. To do this, we can click the terminal key that you see here in the lower left hand side of the screen. With the terminal open, we're going to enter the command sudo apt update and and sudo apt upgrade dash y. This will automate the entire upgrade process of Linux Mint and stop it from asking you if this is what you really want to do. You will need to remember 
your system password in order to use this command. This will take up 15 to 20 minutes on average for a first installation. After this is finished, you will have a fully updated version of Linux Mint ready to use for whatever you plan on using it for. If you're looking for other things to do with your newly set up VM, check out some of the other videos from Virtualize Everything, showing you some of the cool features and techniques and things that you can do with your new home lab server. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to help virtualize everything, grow, and provide more informative information to more viewers. Teaching you about home lab setups and virtualization servers is a passion of the staff at Virtualize Everything and we wish to help as many people as possible virtualize elements of their day-to-day -day life for learning and convenience. Have a good night. <music>